Last spring, a new plant that I had never seen before popped up in my garden. Through the help of some friends, I was able to identify it as cleavers or sticky weed, but it also goes by other names such as sticky willy, grip grass, catchweed, or bed straw, which comes from its historical use as a mattress stuffing or goose grass because apparently geese like to eat it, but it is not to be confused with another plant that also goes by goose grass, which is similar to crabgrass. This plant is scientifically known as gallium operine, and it is easily identified by its unique features. There are tiny hooked hairs that covers the stem and leaves, and that's what makes it so clingy or sticky. In fact, the hooked hairs are actually modified hairs called glochids, which helps disperse its seeds by sticking to passing animals. It grows in sprawling vines, often scrambling over other plants, as you can see here. They also have whorls of six to eight lance-shaped leaves, small white star-shaped flowers, and those tiny bristly fruits that stick to everything. They thrive in damp, shady areas, which makes sense for this area as it does get a lot of shade. Cleavers are incredibly prolific. They spread quickly and can become a nuisance in gardens, and they do love to climb and can smother other plants and grow to be about one to three feet tall. I've seen it out in the wild in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, as well as at Heather Farm Park in Walnut Creek. And at Heather Farm Park, it looks like they have even caged it up for some reason, probably to keep people from brushing up against it since it's on a walking path, as well as to keep it from sprawling across other plants in the area because they, for some reason, don't want to remove it. And if you are trying to get rid of it, the best method is to pull it out by the roots before it sets seed, and you'll definitely want to wear gloves. Regular weeding is key to keeping it under control because it can keep sneaking back up. Many insects do feed on it, such as spittle bugs, spider mites, and aphids. So if you would rather not keep the plant around to attract those insects to your garden, you may want to remove it, although you could also argue that you could keep it as a trap crop of sorts to hopefully keep them from your other plants. But despite its sticky reputation, cleavers are actually quite useful. Historically, they've been used for a variety of medicinal and practical purposes and are also edible. The young shoots and leaves can be added to salads or can be cooked like spinach. I personally haven't tried it, but it is said to have a mild, slightly bitter taste, but some people also say that it tastes like celery. It is also said that it can be a great lymphatic cleanser by reducing swelling and can support your immune system by making a simple tea by steeping the fresh or dried plant in hot water. And some people will roast the seeds and use them as a coffee substitute. And externally, a poultice or wash made from cleavers can soothe skin irritations and promote healing. I personally haven't tried this either, but it could be something interesting to try. But whichever way you decide to use it, just make sure that it is the correct plant. So the next time you encounter cleavers, you can choose to remove them or keep them. It's entirely up to you. If you have other plants in the area that you don't want to be smothered by cleavers, then by all means, remove as much as you can, but it's also okay if you want to keep it for its medicinal purposes and if you don't have other plants around that you are concerned with. And even if you do remove cleavers from your garden, you can still dry them and use them later. So if you hate the idea of it taking over your garden and smothering your other plants, but you're intrigued by its medicinal properties, it's a win-win. And remember, what's considered a weed can be subjective based on whether you want the plant to be growing where it's growing and with that, I'll end this video with a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson.